Hello, friends. Matt at Altera Arms here. I'm um, just going to show you a little bit about what goes into uh, manufacturing our receivers. We have what starts out as the blank receiver. This thing's about uh, between 7 and 8 pounds of uh, 416 stainless steel. Um, it's pre-hardened to Rockwell C scale, about 40. So not a real easy material to work with, but the nice thing about it is we don't have to heat treat it afterwards, so everything stays how it gets machined. First thing we're going to do is deck off both sides, break the sharp edges on the corners from where it was saw cut, and then we're going to drill a hole all the way through it using this vertical mill. Um, we're drilling the bore undersize, and then we're going to hone it to final diameter um, using a hone machine that we just recently got up in the shop. Got a lot of work to do on this thing, so let's get started here in the mill. All right, so we've, uh, we've cut the top of the part off, just decked it flat, and now we are uh, just putting a chamfer on it, just a little edge break so we don't cut ourselves while we're handling it. Um, we're going to flip the thing over, do the same thing on the other side, and then we're going to drill all the way through it. So right now we're drilling the pilot hole, punching a hole two inches or so deep for the long one to start in. That's what it looks like. This guy is going to come in and just drill, uh, you know, the depth that that little guy can't reach. All right, so we've got our super long drill in here. I think this goes uh, 14 or 15 times the diameter. So you're getting down there quite a ways. you got to have kind of a special tool to be able to cut that, especially at this depth to diameter ratio. So that's what we've got here. We've got about 280 PSI of through spindle coolant pressure. And... Uh, yeah, we're just going to chew right through this thing. This drill, we're actually drilling the diameter of this hole uh, to slightly smaller than the finished diameter with this drill uh, because we have a new machine up and running here in the shop called a home. And that machine is going to take the material out and make the hole nice and straight and the proper finished diameter. Now we got the hole all the way through this thing. Now she's ready to take this hole to the final diameter. Right. I'm Drew with Altera. We took a raw receiver blank and we gun drilled a hole a little bit undersized here. And now we're going to put it on this hone. And this hone will, about as accurately as possible, make the diameter a little bit larger to spec and then also make it round and straight more so than a reamer or a drill. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and use this makeshift shield here to keep from getting oil all over your shirt. So this machine has honing stones that are adjustable and the machine automatically adjusts it basically every stroke for wear and to increase the diameter until it gets the bore diameter. As it wears, it makes that hole round and straight. Basically, the final product is a true straight receiver blank. Now we have a precision ground gauge pin that we use to measure the diameter. This is a 700 thousandths uh, plus pin. And so you can get an idea of how tight the tolerances are. This thing actually is airtight. So just the, the air inside the bore is holding that pin in place. So now that this part's been honed to the final diameter, we're gonna put it in a twin spindle lathe and we're gonna we're gonna turn the outside diameter while indicated to the inside just stop with the air. I hate air. We're going to actually turn the outside of this receiver, and so that way the outside will be concentric to the inside. Stick with us, and uh, we'll show you the next step. Ah! Idiot! Why are we outsourcing this to the shop down the street instead of doing it in-house? Our CNC lathe is missing 
one feature that would allow us to do this in-house. So they happen to have the, the second turret for the second spindle. Ours has one and does not have a tail stock. We have main spindle, sub spindle. We have an ID expanding collet on this side that expands to drive the turning operation of this and then this expands on the other side so that way everything's all these have been turned in the machine so they're concentric and now we're going to turn the OD to be concentric with the ID of that hole that we drilled and honed earlier. We're taking off 150 thousandths per side so uh, I think there's 15 passes on this for this technology. Yeah so we have to basically turn down those 15 passes are, and we're leaving basically the end of it at close to two inch diameter that then gets hogged away in the mill. And the whole reason we're doing this is just so we can have an integrated recoil lug on the end of the receiver. How many of these will you knock out on your shift? Uh, I'm gonna try to get 60 today. Basically six an hour, six about 10 minutes. Then I gotta make quality parts for you too, so there's that factor. Oh, we'd appreciate that. <laughs> so once these parts are done here, we'll know that the outside diameter is concentric with the inside diameter. And that way we can put it in the EDM fixture and know that when we cut the, the bull lug raceways that they're gonna be perfectly concentric with the bore that we drilled and honed the diameter. I do oh. a bunch of measuring before I take it out. Gotcha. Important, got perfect parts. <laughs> Try to keep all that taper out, otherwise your concentricity would do no good. So I'll try to keep it within within a thousandths right here, you know, within your tolerance on your front. That way your concentricity is good, and perpendicularity, and everything should be good. So. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. At this point, we have gun drilled and honed these receivers, the bore of the receivers and then OD turned off of the ID, these receiver blanks. So now that the OD is concentric to the ID within a few 10 thousandths of an inch, now we need to put this inside the EDM, which is an electric discharge machine. Its whole job is to just cut out these bolt lug raceways. So this thing uses a really small diameter wire that's energized electrically and it burns and cuts metal without applying any pressure. So it's probably the most accurate way of removing material from these parts. It's capable of cutting the bolt lug raceways within a few ten thousandths of an inch across a nine inch length part. We can put them inside this fixture, which is true to the machine. Tighten them down. And again, this machine doesn't have any cutting pressure, so it doesn't require very much tension. It's electrically arcing and burning the material out of the inside of it. This machine not only feeds wire through here, but it forces water at about 300 PSI from the top and the bottom, blowing the slag or the basically the remnant of the arcing process out of the way. And this wire is going to feed down through into the bottom nozzle and out the back. And as the machine's running, it's constantly feeding wire and just turning it into recycling in the back. This machine holds about 250 gallons of water. And as this machine feeds wire and arcs and burns those profiles, again, it's constantly circulating water through the filters of the machine, putting deionized water back inside of it. So the blue arcing light that you see right there is where the wire is arcing against the receiver material and uh, you can also see in here that there's some kind of cloudiness that is the slag from basically like welding arc being blown out of the way by the high pressure nozzles there's a green line on the inside that's about seven thousandths of an inch smaller than the yellow line that's on the outside so it does a roughing pass and then it gets to here, changes to a different cutting parameter, runs up there, and then the entire slug drops out of the receiver. And then it does a finish pass, 
yellow line comes over here and starts the rough pass again dropping the slug here and then does a finish pass and now you have both of the bolt lug raceways uh, cut very accurately and in about two and a half hours this part will be done it's obviously a lot more time consuming process a lot of the cheaper receivers this can be done in a brooch in about six minutes but uh, they're not smooth they're not accurate and induces a lot of stress in the material it can't hold the same tolerances that we do using a wire edm machine so we put a magnet right here that kind of holds the slug in place. We've already drained the water. The slug drops out of the bottom. And you can see this is where your bolt slides through. Here's one that is the final piece out of the machine. You can see some of the arc burn color on the top here. And... This is how your bolt fits in. Now it goes into the mill over here that you can probably hear in the background. And we're going to turn this into a finished receiver. I'm Matt here at Altera. I'm pretty sure uh, you saw me earlier on this video talking to you about how we make receivers. I'm going to wrap up the final part of that process now. Um, so this is where we left off. Um, Drew told you about how we EDM the... Uh, anti-bind rail and bolt lug raceway into the receiver. And so we've got one of those here. Um, this guy goes into the mill, but we basically take this and turn it into this guy here. So we've got our uh, optic mounting uh, pinholes and threads are in. Um, our cutaway for the bolt handle is in. We've got our unique serial number here. We put, you know, as per uh, government regulations, a unique serial number on every receiver. So no two of these will be alike, of course. We've got a hole here for uh, pressure blow off in case uh, something extra pressure happens inside of the rifle. Um, we've got our action screw holes are in, our uh, magazine uh, cutout, trigger pocket, and... Uh, logo engraving and bolt release. After we get done with this, um, we're gonna stack up you know, a handful of these and then we're going to run this through and finish it. When the part is finished, it ends up like this. So on our last stop, we're going to be uh, cutting the threads for the connection to the barrel, um, finishing up the recoil lug, putting our uh, bolt lug and press ramp down inside of here. Um, and just kind of finishing everything else up. We got our fire and safe engraving, finished machining the tang. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the quality control process on our receivers. You know, we feel pretty good about the repeatability of our process and, you know, the fact that over and over we can get, you know, a, a part that's in spec every time. However, we need to make sure that that's happened. And so if you look here, um, every one of our parts, as we make them, will go through several uh, quality checks here and so on each part we have the serial number written down on this paper and then what dimensions were recorded um, for every part and then see we've got another uh, sheet here for when we do the second operation on this part and finish it so should we ever have an issue with this thing down the down the line we can come back reference our paperwork see you know what all the dimensions measured um, also from a manufacturing uh, process standpoint I can review this data and see, you know, are certain dimensions trending, um, you know, into or out of spec and then make edits to my process to keep everything running nice and smooth in here. Yeah, every every one of these parts is uh, exhaustively checked. Um, we also have this digital height gauge here. So, like, say, for example, um, we need to check this here. I'm just come in with this probe. And... This readout here will tell us uh, exactly how far from this uh, ground granite surface plate we are. All these things put together, you know, combined to give us one of the best, most reliable systems in the market. Around the corner into this uh, cool machine we have over here, this is a vibratory tumbler. So you basically have a bathtub full of rocks. And as this thing runs, it vibrates and the part turns around in there. And picture when this thing gets down to the bottom of all these rocks, you've got a ton of weight on it. 
and all just kind of pushing around and it softens all of the hard edges on this thing makes it to where when you handle it you don't get cut yeah that's really the last step to uh finish receiver before we head over to the lathe and uh, attach it to a barrel and make a rifle out of it in conclusion to wrap this up this is what we start with blank solid bar a 416 steel this is how we finish beautiful receiver um i think it should be obvious to anybody who stuck with us to the end of this video that if we're going to put the kind of effort it takes to turn this into this, we are definitely going to put the same amount of effort into the rest of the build. And we're going to make sure that every rifle that comes out of our shop is one that any of us would trust in the field. Thanks for watching.